Okay, so I read about, uh, thank you for the feedback, a couple of things. The first one, it seems that some students, there's a trend, they would like me to speak more slowly. So I'll try to speak more slowly. Maybe in the UK and Ireland, people speak more quickly than in the USA. Okay. Uh, also, some student asked about the course is hard or they need to do more revision. So we'll try to ask more questions to the students during the class. Okay. So then let's continue with the class. So just uh, let's just mention the BRICS. Do you know the BRICS? Just something different for a while. So which countries are in the BRICS? Russia, India. China, South Africa, okay? So, this is called an acronym. First used by Goldman Sachs in 2003. So, it's suggesting, Goldman Sachs was suggesting that China and India are going to become the world's dominant suppliers of manufactured goods and services. Brazil and Russia, the main suppliers of raw materials. <coughs> so, at that time, they thought these economies is going to be the main force behind the growth in the future. Okay, uh, so we have funds both focused on the BRICS. Okay, from November 2001 to November 2007, the stock market in those countries went up a lot. Brazil 360 percent, India 500 percent, Russia 600 percent, China 800 percent. Did you want to invest in the Chinese stock market in 2001? Yes. yes. Well, you would have made some good returns. Okay. But then there was the global financial crisis and fell back down again. Okay. But uh, in 2050, this is currently which is the world's largest economy? Which is the world's largest economy by GDP? Do you understand GDP? Yes. At the moment, which is the world's economy? The euro area, that's not a country, right? Correct, but not, not, it's not a country. So which country? Yes. USA. USA, which is second? China. China. Which is third? Germany. Japan, right? China passed Japan just recently, a couple of years ago. Okay, but China has a lot more people than Japan. Ten times more people. Okay? But their GDP, total, this is total GDP, just passed to Japan. So we can expect in the future these economies have more ability to grow, right? Because we have other economies, they already developed. If you're already developed economy, you can't grow as quickly. You're going to be growing slowly, like Japan or Germany or the US, right? But some economies are here, so they still have a lot of chance to grow, okay? So we expect that the growth rate will be higher. In, in GDP growth rate will be higher in the BRIC countries, right? That's, they're called emerging economies. And the GDP, if the GDP growth rate is higher, then the GDP is going to pass out. So in the end, China will pass out the US by 2015. Okay? India will pass out Japan. Brazil and Russia will pass out Germany. Okay? So, They have higher growth rates. What was the GDP growth rate in China last year? Six or seven percent. What was the GDP growth rate in the US? Two or three percent. Right, that seems to be around the trend. For the emerging economies, they can grow around six percent. The developed economies around two or three percent. So uh, here we can see the equity market performance. So we can see that. The uh, equity, the stock markets, is get, was getting more, attracting more money in the emerging economies, okay? And le less percentage of the total was going to developed economies. So, if I think China has a higher GDP growth rate than another country, I might want to invest in the Chinese stock markets. Now, of course, there are many American companies which do business in China, okay? So it's not that simple. I can also invest in a US company which does a lot of business in China. Okay? 
let's say you have a US company which is getting 50% of its revenue from China. If China has a high GDP growth rate, this company is also going to get an advantage, so I can invest in this company in the US, right? So a lot of US investors, when they want to get an advantage from emerging markets, they don't just invest in the Chinese stock market. They invest in American companies which do business in China, or Russia, or Brazil. So that's another way you can get advantage, right? Invest in companies from your country which do a lot of business in countries with a high growth rate, okay? Emerging economies. So just, they had a, a good growth rate up here around uh, 10, China was the highest one, up, up around, we saw it grew about 13% in 2007. Since then it's come back down a bit, okay? Russia fell a lot during the crisis, but came back up again, okay? But we can see the growth rate around here. If we make this for the developed economies, the world line, this is the world line, the blue line, all the world, right? So emerging economies have higher growth rate than the world average. <coughs> populations are very big. China, India, Russia, Brazil, big populations, okay? GDP per capita, key number is $10,000 currently. It will get bigger. If your population is earning $10,000, it means they are pretty much like a consumer in another country, right? What kind of things do you buy every week? Hmm? Like a fruit? Anything. What do you buy? What do you consume? Cola. Cola. What else? Anything else? Just cola? <laughs> Just live on cola? Do you use space cream? Um, your personal question? Monthly, maybe. <laughs> monthly? You buy face cream? Yeah. Okay, what else do you buy? Coffee. Coffee? Anything else? Clothes? Oh, uh, yeah, clothes. Mm -hmm. So basically, people who are earning $10,000 can buy all the same things as you, right? As in the developed economy, they can afford to pay for face cream, they can afford to pay for Coca Cola. They can afford to pay for most of the things. They can buy cars, right? Pay for most of the things that people can pay for. So once your income is over this 10,000, Brazil, Russia, South Africa, China these days, around 10,000, the average income, okay? Then it means that those consumers is open up to a lot of companies, okay, around the world. So we can see that a lot of companies like BMW, Volkswagen, a uh, luxury product or face cream product, right, or carbonated drinks, anything, can be sold in these countries, okay? So, <coughs> we can see that if there is some economic problem, they can, their currencies can change, okay? China is keeping very close and managed, so we know that that's, uh, not going to change that much, right? But Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, here in one year, their currencies got weaker by 20%, okay? So if you invest in the Brazilian stock market, what should you also do? Hedge using what? Forward contract, right? To avoid this risk, okay? The currency can drop in the one year 24, 25%, okay? So if we, we could say, yes, the stock price went up 10%, right? But then when we change our money back to Korean won, do we have more money or less money in the end? Less money, unless we hedge, okay? Using the forward contract. In this case, the China, the no. test of we want to. In China, do you, do you need to hedge in China? No, I think. No, right? You should be okay. Of course, the central bank could suddenly change their policy. Right? They could suddenly decide, oh, we're going to change our mind because of some crisis. That's a risk, but it should be okay in China, right? <coughs> uh, so here we can see, like, in China in 2011, the Chinese currency, the stock market went down by this much. US dollar return, you actually made it, it wasn't as bad, okay? 
Uh, Brazil, the local return minus 14, but because of the extra 20% loss in the exchange rate, you would have lost 20% in US dollars. India, 22 to 34, 15 to 19. South Africa, you would have made a profit of 2% on the stock market, but with the exchange rate, in the end, minus 17. Okay? So, just we, that's just some example. So, we're going to talk about uh, financial hedges today. So, we have, we mentioned in the last class, sometimes the exchange exposure is straightforward and known. If I invest in the stock market, and I know I'm going to change my money back next year, I invest in the stock market for one year, is that known or unknown? No. Known, right? What kind of exposure is that? Transaction exposure. It's a fixed obligation. Okay? In other cases, it's complex and less certain. I'm running a small business and I'm selling uh, cars in another country. Okay? Do I know how many cars I will sell next year? Can I predict the future? No. no. So it's complex and less certain. What's that called? Economic exposure. So economic exposure, we don't know when and how much we will get. So the idea of hedging is to make an opposite situation. You understand opposite? That's a hedging. Did you ever go to the horse races? Horse racing? No? Sun Ma? Seoul Land? Young Ma? Sun Ma horse riding? Yes. Young Ma horse racing? Yes. You never went there? Yes. Hedging would be like you bet on every horse in the race. <laughs> right? Are you going to make a profit if you make bet on every horse in the race? No. no. You're going to lose. That would be like transaction cost. The bookmaker is going to make a small profit. Okay? They make the odds in an unfair way. So if you bet on every horse in the race, you're going to lose a little bit. That's like hedging. Okay? There's a cost to hedging. But we're taking the opposite position. So we, if we lose, we don't lose too much. Okay? So even easier, there's two teams playing in the soccer game. You bet on the two teams. Okay? Then you're, you're not going to lose too much. You'll just you'll lose a little bit. Okay? So in business, in gambling, nobody is forcing you to bet on one team. But in business, you're forced to bet on one team. Okay? You have to do exports or imports. So you have to make a bet on one team. Okay, so you don't want to lose, if that team loses, you don't want to lose all your money. So you want to bet on the other team too. Okay, that way you're sure you bet on this team, you bet on that team. You're sure you're just going to lose maximum loss, a small amount. Okay? So we're doing the opposite situation. Okay, so we talked about the open long position. What is a long position in a foreign currency? I, not more than I expect, I hope, I hope, I want it to get stronger. Is that accounts payable or accounts receivable? I want the foreign currency to get stronger. Receivable. receivable. I'm receiving, I want it to get stronger. Okay. In that case, I need to make a short position in the same currency. Okay. What's an example of a short position in that currency? How can I make a short position in a currency? How does George Soros make a short position in a currency? Sell the currency, but where am I going to get the currency from? No, borrow. If I borrow in a currency, I have a short position. Okay? Do you understand that? If I borrow in a currency, am I hoping the currency gets stronger or weaker? Weaker. Okay? Then it's easier to pay back. So. This is a very simple way that if you're not a big company, you're just a small company, you can do that. Right? We'll talk about it later. But I have an account receivable. Okay? I'm receiving uh, pounds, 5, 000, 5 million pounds okay? in three months. So what's the risk? Pound gets stronger or weaker, what's the risk? 
hand gets weaker, right? So I'm long. This is a long position. Okay? So I want the pan to get stronger, not weaker. Then I can get I can take short position. Okay? I can get a long enough pounds now. Of <coughs> uh, five million pounds, right? Now. Then what's that? Short position. <coughs> okay, do I want the pan to get what? Stronger or weaker in this case? Okay, so it's the opposite. Do you understand the opposite? So what happens? Okay. Uh, I'm going to receive pounds after three months. What am I going to do with these pounds when I receive them? I'm going to pay back my loan. Okay. Do you understand? I get a loan now in pounds. Then, three months later, I receive the pounds. I use those pounds to pay back my loan. Okay. Was there any currency risk here? No. no. Okay. I eliminated my risk. That's one way. Forward contract is easier. Okay. This is a bit messing about a bit. And it's going to be more expensive. Okay. Because I have to get a loan and pay the interest on the loan. Okay. So, but we could do that if we don't want to make a forward contract. We could just get a loan. Okay. So what I'm doing is just cancelling one position with the other position. Long and short, cancelling out. So that if I have the other way around, a short position, what will I do? So I have to pay pounds. Okay, I want the pound to get weaker. So what should I do here? I need to pay pounds in three months. What should I do today? The last time I borrowed pounds. The opposite. Hmm? What's the opposite of getting a loan in pounds? Hmm? What's another word for receive? I'm going to buy pounds now. Okay? I buy the pounds now, then I, I don't have any currency risk. I, I have the pounds ready, and I can pay them back after three months. Okay? So if I buy pounds now, I'm going to be long, and I will want the pound to get stronger. So it will be the opposite position. Okay, so really I'm just preparing. I need to pay pounds in three months. Just I buy the pounds today at today's exchange rate. Okay, change my money to pounds, just leave it there for three months, and pay after three months. Yes? Is that, is that long or short? I pay pound five minutes. Short or long? Ah, yes, so this one is, I didn't change, right? That's short. So I'm, I want the pound to get weaker in short position. So thanks for pointing it out. So do you have any questions about that? Okay, this one is not, forward contract might be better than this because here I have to buy the pounds and I can't use the money. I need to leave the money to one side for three months. Okay. But if I make a forward contract, I can just fix. This case, we, we are ignore the transaction cost. There is a transaction cost here. That if I buy the pounds, I, I can't use the pounds for three months. I can't use this cash for three months. That's a cost, right? I could invest this money somewhere else or do something else with the money. Okay, I can deposit it in the bank and get some interest rate on the pound interest rate, but I can't use it for three months. Okay? Do you understand that cost? So we talked about the case of Lufthansa. We have to decide to hedge or not to hedge. Is it an easy decision? Uh, no, no. In real life, is everything black and white? No, no. There's always one correct answer? No. Or there's not always one correct answer? Is it like mathematics? No. no. You do the equation, there's one solution? No. No, right? We saw with Lufthansa, at the start, it looks like a good decision. And then maybe later it's not, right? The company might not be happy. But at least you need to try and make the right decision, okay, from the start. So we are going to try and learn how to make the right decision about hedging, okay? So 
discuss with your partner, first of all, what are some of the factors that would influence a firm or investor's decision to hedge or not to hedge? Okay, so Senya, uh, Davidenko, what do you think? I think that it depends on the sum of money. Mm -hmm. The amount of money. What else? strength of weakness of the foreign currency. Okay. If we have a long position and we think it's going to be a strong currency, then we might decide not to hedge. Okay. Or maybe just do half the hedge, 50%. Okay. How comfortable, how confident are we about our forecast? The less comfortable, the more likely to hedge. Okay. On the other hand, they might just decide just to do forward contracts and not to think about the currency. So like you said, they're attitude to risk, right? Starbucks, does it want to sell coffee overseas or speculate on currency moves? What do you think Starbucks wants to do? So then it can just make 100% forward contract, right? Lufthansa might say, I just want to sell the airplanes and just eliminate any currency risk, okay? Uh, so some people, of course, have a, do currency trading. Okay, they are trying to make money from predicting the future. Yeah, right. So given that the downside risk associated with an open FX position, we would assume that most companies and investors want to hedge their foreign exchange exposure. So how can firms hedge? Discuss with your partner. Review. How can the companies hedge? Their foreign exchange exposure. What do you mean? I think I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
아 근데 상관없어. 걔 별로 난 별로 마음에 들지 않았어. 얘가 그냥 즉흥적으로 시야 빼는 애한테. 형이 하라. 야 나는 한 한국말 할줄 아는 애로 알고 있지. 너 이제 뭐라고 그러는 거야? 너 이제 뭐라고 그러는 거야? 안 되려고 힘이 안 뜨는 거야 지금 얘기하니까. 아니 아니 그게 아니라. 팀에 들어가야지 팀이 Okay, so Senya uh, lost a bit. How can firms hedge? Yes. They can do this way, right? This is called money market hedging. Money market hedging. Okay, and the other way. So we have the financial contracts, money market hedgings, we talked about borrowing or investing in local currencies, right? Uh, we're going to talk about option contracts. It's like a forward contract, but it gives you the option. You can, you pay a premium and you can cancel the contract if you want, okay? Operational hedges we already talked about in the last class, right? Diversification. Uh, in other countries, that kind of thing. So we have the forward contract. Who is going to give you the forward contract? Who? Bank. Banks, right? So you have to call the bank if you want to get a uh, forward contract. Okay. So this is the definition of a forward contract. It's a contract which allows the firm to buy or sell a specific amount of foreign currency on a future date at the exchange rate we decide today. This is called a forward exchange rate. How do we decide the exchange rate? What do we use? We have three things we use to decide the exchange rate. Two interest rates of the two currencies and and the current, today's exchange rate, right? We use those three things and we should be able to calculate the forward rate, okay? A forward contract cannot be cancelled, okay? So if we have an open long FX position, we hedge with the selling foreign currency. If we have a short FX position, we're going to purchase the foreign currency, okay? In the future. So forward contracts allow us to lock, to lock in the exchange rate. So example of the long position. A US firm has sold a product to a German company. The US firm agrees to accept payment of 100,000 euros in 30 days. So what type of exposure does the US firm have? <coughs> hmm? Transaction. Transaction exposure, but is it long or short position? Are they are getting paid in euros. Are they long or short? Are they hoping the euro gets stronger or weaker? You're getting paid in euros, you want the euro to get weaker? Then I pay you in euros, you want it to be weaker. When you change the euro to your currency, are you going to get more of your currency or less of your currency? So if the euro is weaker, Let's say that we have dollars, right? One euro, one euro is equal to one thirty dollars, right? What's a weaker euro? More dollars or less dollars? So are you going to get less dollars or more dollars with a weaker euro? Less dollars. So do you want the euro to get stronger or weaker? Stronger. You're getting paid in euros. Stronger. If you get stronger. Are you going to get more dollars or less dollars? Do you want this one or this one? Okay, so can you remember? We're getting, did you write it down in the last class? If we were getting paid 
we want the foreign currency to get stronger. Okay, if you didn't write it down in the last class, then write it down now, okay? Paid, if we're getting paid in the foreign currency, we want it to get stronger. If we are paying the foreign currency, we want it to get weaker, okay? So this is a long transaction exposure. We want it to get stronger. So what is the problem for the US firm if it doesn't hedge the position? What's the risk? Um, gets weaker. The euro gets weaker. Okay, the risk, this is the risk. Okay? So if the euro is worth less, I won't get as many dollars. We'll make an uh, exchange rate. Okay? Loss. So it decides it wants to hedge its, its transaction exposure. So they ask the bank for a 30 day <coughs> forward quote. So they tell them this information. Right, they call the bank and they ask the bank about the rates and the bank tells them this is the rate for 30 days. Okay? Uh, so assume the US firm hedges its exposure at the quote above. Which quote should it use? This one or this one? Calculate how many US dollars they will get in 30 days. So discuss with your partner. 100,000 euros. Is it going to be 123 or 124? And then how much dollars will you get? And then will it go? And then will it go? Running the job. Running the job. Running the job. So we have two choices. The bank is going to give us $123,000 or the bank is going to give us 124000 dollars right? So which one do you think the bank is going to give us? The higher one or the lower one? Okay. So uh, we can see it's this one here. Okay, the lower one. So it means we're, we're sure that we can get 123,000 after one month, okay? If we don't cover the position, we're not sure, okay? It could go anyway. Which do you prefer, to be sure or not sure? Sure, right? It's better to be sure. What about if you think the euro is going to get stronger? You're pretty sure the euro will get stronger. Don't hedge at all? Zero hedging? Maybe you can decide 10%, 20%, 40%, 90%. A lot of companies, they don't hedge, they might not hedge 100%, they might hedge 90%, 80%. Okay? Still a lot of hedging, but just a little bit to allow a little bit of extra profit. Okay? So this time the US firm has purchased a product from a British company. So it needs to pay 100,000 in 30 days. What kind of position is that? Short. Short position. We hope the currency gets weaker. Okay? So that's a quicker answer. What's the problem? The risk is the pound will get stronger, the opposite. Okay? So again, uh, the US firm decides it wants to cover this. They ask for the quote and receives the following quote. So what? <coughs> calculate how much. Uh, dollars is the US company going to have to pay? Hundred and seventy six. So the last time it was one hundred and seventy five. This time it should be a hundred. It was this side. <laughs> <laughs> so quick way, right? So it's on the other side. Okay. So if we look at what is the bank doing here, right? the bank is we are giving the bank. And, uh, sorry, we are giving the bank dollars to get the pounds. We need to pay the pounds to the British company, right? So if we are giving the bank dollars, they are clearly going to ask us for the higher number of dollars, not the lower number, okay? They want us to give them $176 to get one pound, not 175 So we have to pay the higher number to the bank of dollars. Okay? Do you have any question about that? We can make these are these are specified contracts, right? We call the bank. We can ask them. 
doesn't have to be one month, it can be 45 days or 60 days, okay? They do the amount of currency we want, okay? There's no upfront fee, deposit or commission. Just the difference between the bid and ask price is the profit for the bank. The same as if we change the money today. If we change the money today, there's still a difference between the bid and the ask price, okay? So, <coughs> the advantage is we know exactly what the home currency equivalent of the foreign currency will be in the future. So I can know exactly how much in pounds but, or euros, but now I can also know exactly how much I need in dollars. So this is the main advantage of the forward contract. Of course, the disadvantage is uh, I can't be sure of my, or I can't make any profit if the uh, if we have a favourable exchange rate change. Do you understand favourable? Favourable means in a good direction for me. So if we have an open long position, the one we talked about at the start, we are receiving 100,000 euros. Upside potential, upside means on the top, the good side. If the euro strengthens, the euro is worth more than US dollars. Okay? We have the short position. If the pound weakens, we take fewer US dollars to buy pounds. So this is the disadvantage, okay? I can't take it, if this happens, I don't get any profit. Okay? I can't make any advantage. So this is where the option contract comes in. Would you like to have the choice of doing the forward contract or not? So let's say you make the forward contract for the euros at 1.3. Okay, so we have 100,000 euros at 123, it's going to be $123,000 after okay. one month, right? But what, what would be the good situation here for us? We have a long position, so good situation would be a stronger dollar. So let's say, sorry, a stronger euro, let's say it changes to 130, then I would get one. $130,000. Which is better? This one is better. Would I not, but what's the risk? The risk is it goes to 115 and I end up with 115, right? So this is why I make the forward contract because of this situation. That's why I do the forward contract. I don't want this, okay? But the disadvantage is I don't get this. So could, would you like a contract where you can have this and this? So you, you can make the contract to change the money here, okay? but then you have a choice. If the currency gets weaker, are you going to keep your contract or throw away the contract? Keep the contract. If it gets stronger, would you like to have the choice to throw away the contract? Yes. Tear off the contract? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what an options contract is. Is that going to be free? No. No, no. no of course not. Who would do that for free? <laughs> Right, they want to be very silly. Okay, so there's going to be a cost. That cost is called a premium. We pay a premium at the start. It's like insurance. Okay, if I have car insurance, I pay a premium at the start of the year, five hundred thousand one. Right. That means that it's very similar to this. I pay that premium. If I don't have any accident. The insurance company gets the money, keeps the money, and there's no problem, right? That's in this case. Okay, the insurance company keeps the money, or the bank keeps the money, okay? But in this case, uh, then I don't, I tear up the contract, and then the insurance, if we look at insurance, I have an accident, the insurance company loses money, right? They have to pay the money. So it's like the insurance company is gambling. I pay them the premium. If nothing happens, they can keep the money. No problem. Okay? If something bad happens, the insurance company has to pay more money. Okay? But of course, because they sell their insurance product to so many people, they can do this kind of system. Right? They can make it so that 
even though on some people they have to pay more money, they can make the premium high enough so they always win. Okay, that's the same idea for options contracts. So we have to look at the premium and decide, is it worth to pay the premium or not? Okay. So uh, this definition of an options contract means that the company has the right but not the obligation. So the, do you understand the right? You have rights. What kind of rights do you have? Hmm? Right to live. Right to vote. Okay, so you have the right to use the contract if you want. Okay, but you don't have the obligation. Okay, you don't have to use the contract. Do you understand obligation? Yes. So you have the right but not the obligation to either buy or sell the currency in the future. We talk about the exchange, the forward rate is called the strike price and a specified date. So really, it's just a forward contract. We make the strike price, the forward rate, we make the date, okay? And it's either to buy or sell the currency, and then we can have the choice. <coughs> What's the meaning of the record? record pause? Okay. Remember, a forward contract is an obligation, okay? This is not an obligation. Difference between the option and forward contract, okay? In the forward contract, do you have a choice? No. No, no you have to keep the forward contract, right? If the ex exchange rate changes to here, then can you say, sorry to the bank, sorry, uh, I don't want to do the contract anymore. Yeah. Can you say that to the bank in forward contract? No. No, so forward contract is an obligation. Option contract is not an obligation. You have this option. You understand option? Yes. yes. I can do this if I want. If I don't want, I don't have to do that. Okay? So, <coughs> recall means remember. So, options contracts allow us to take advantage of a favorable change in the exchange rate, the upside, while providing insurance against unfavorable ex ex uh, changes in the exchange rate. So really it's like insurance product. If we want to compare the options contract to something that's like an insurance, buying insurance against the exchange rate changing. Okay? Badly for us. So the hedging firm has to pay for this in the premium. So premium also used in insurance vocabulary. Option contracts can be written by the bank individually, so I can call the bank and make an options contract with the bank. Or it's also purchased on organized exchanges, for example, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. In this case, the market makers offer individually tailored option contracts, the banks, but the exchanges only offer standardized contracts. So we have got the CME is the biggest exchange in the world for the futures contracts. So just at home, you can look at the CME. Okay. Another student also suggested we give some more homework activity to do at home, right? Mm -hmm. So just at home, just type into Google CME. Can you remember CME? The first hit is going to be CME Group. Right? They, have, they even have Korean. So you can check in Korean if you want. Okay? But we are going to do in English. So delete this KO. You want to check in English. Okay? So what is this? This is an exchange. Do you understand exchange? What does exchange mean? If we exchange something, what does it mean? I give and get something. We're talking about money, right? I give you money, you give me a contract, that kind of thing. So here we have a simple example. Let's have a look at the first one. Agriculture. Corn. Do you understand corn? Yes. So I clicked on agriculture and the first one is corn. So what we have here, this is a futures contract. 
A futures contract is like a forward contract, but it's standardized. Do you understand standardized? Because when we sell on the exchange, we can't sell the individual thing. It's like you go to the suit shop. You can buy the tailored suit, made especially for you, or you buy the suit that's made for everybody. Okay, which one can we compare the price more easily? The suit that's made especially for you, or the suit that's tailored for everybody? Everybody. everybody. So we want people to be able to compare the price to buy and sell. Okay? So we have the same date and the same amount. Same date and same amount. Then we can, it can be traded in the market at a certain price. So here we have an example. Month is December 2015. Okay? And it means that we are going to deliver the corn in December 2015. This is the price for the corn. Okay? Uh, so this many people are trading this contract. So this is a contract of a farmer. The farmer is going to sell the corn. When are they going to deliver the corn? In December. Okay? It's a contract to deliver the corn in December. So, if we look here at contract specifications across here, we can see that it's, it's standard. Contract union, unit, 5,000 bushel, bushels, 127 tons. Do you understand tons? Yes. So, everybody, every contract is the same. Delivered in December, spent maybe the first Monday in December, and the same amount of corn. And it's the same quali quality of corn, right? So, it's... 15th calendar day of every month, it's delivered, okay? So then we can compare the price and we can trade more easily if everything is standard. Do you understand standard? Yes. So I can also buy this contract. Am I going to get corn delivered to my house? 127 <coughs> tons of corn delivered to my house in Korea from the US? No, I'm a speculator. I think the price of corn will go up. Do I need to go to the shop? Buy all the corn in the shop, bring home, wait for one month, bring the corn back to the shop, try to sell it back. No, I can just buy this kind of contract. Okay, I can lose my money. If the price goes down, I'm still not going to accept delivery. I'm going to sell it before December. Okay, I'm going to sell that contract because I'm just a speculator. So speculators get involved here too. Okay, some people need to buy corn, like, do you know Kellogg's? They make cornflakes, ah. they need to buy corn, right? But I'm just a speculator, I get involved in the market. I think there was a lot of rain last week, so the supply is down, so price might go up, okay? So this is kind of this kind of market, and we have this kind of market for currencies with standard contracts. So just at home, you can check this about FX, and just read about the CME. What is it? What does it do? Okay, try to understand about how this, this exchange works, and we'll discuss it in the next class. Okay? Also in the next class, today you told me the, the groups, but you need to tell me the topic of your presentation, right? Some group, did some group already tell me their topic? Did any groups already decide their topic? Topics is on the readings. Readings International Financial Management is on the gate plan here. Okay, I'm opening the file now. I download this from the gate plan. Right? This says readings IMF. Then if we open this folder, it's going to be here in Microsoft Word file. Okay. Did you go to the Geisha Pan and download this folder? I am at International Financial Management Final. Here. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth one, just 9 KB. Okay? So if you click on that file, then it opens, then you can see all the topics. So by the next class, you need to tell me your topic.
还是做，不用我啰嗦。